Hey guys, it's Nick, and it's Ice Hog Playoff Time. And we're going to have two special guests coming into this video for the preview for the Rockford Ice Hogs taking on the Isle Wild for this upcoming play in series. First guest is Tyler. Hello, let's go, Ice Hogs. And John wearing something. Fuck the Wild. <laughs> All right, so the Ice Hogs barely even made the playoffs. We don't need to talk about that, Nick. I want to talk about it. The Ice Hogs barely made the playoffs going into it. It took them to the final game of the um, season to actually clinch a playoff spot. And they just looked rough going into the playoffs, but it seemed like they were playing playoff hockey now that it's here, the Ice Hogs are playing the Wild, a team they've played quite a bit this season. What's your thoughts going into the series? Um, we're gonna we we're gonna destroy them. Okay, Tyler. <laughs> well, um, well, I think that with the Ice Hogs, they haven't been in the best of uh, play. They haven't played as well as they definitely could have as of late. Um, it's been a pretty Pretty bad last couple of months. A lot of injuries, a lot of players who are missing time, some guys who are getting called up and stuff. But overall, not as good as you would have wanted from this team. However, you know, we sent down some players back to the Ice Hogs, and then we were able to barely squeak into the playoffs. We got in by one point. Yeah. And we're tied on points with the Iowa Wild. So we're the five seed. And they're the four seed. It's a best of three coming up. First games in Rockford, then the next two are in Iowa. I'm guessing that's, that's for travel. I'm guessing it's for travel reasons. That's so that reason. I it's travel it reasons. Up. That way they can guarantee that each team gets a home game in the best of three. Yep. But then they uh, could have gone like Iowa, Rockford, Iowa. And then. That's too much travel, though. That's too much travel. I think uh, the it's, reason they wanted to, it's, to do it this way. Close. It's a three-hour drive. But the Wild does get home ice advantage still. They still wanted the Ice Hogs to still get a chance to play on home ice, I guess. Mm -hmm. So the road team in the series gets to play the first home, first home game of the series and then travel out to like to the team who has home ice advantage. So they get the two home games. Like last year, they didn't do that in the play-in round when the Ice Hogs played the Stars because that would have been too much travel by the fact that Rockford and uh, I believe they play in Houston where the um, Texas Stars play, where so. uh, Way far. So they basically didn't want to just do that much travel distance-wise mm -hmm. for a playoff series, but for the instance, the Ice Hogs in Iowa play – or like a three hour drive, they can do it this way. Yeah. And I think that that rule, they, they had, they created that as a rule for their best of three play in tournaments. And it's not really about how far the teams are. It's more just a standard that they've set because in some of the other divisions, they're not always the closest matchups. We could have played the Texas stars in this round. We have teams like the Calgary Wranglers who could be playing against the San Diego goals and these kind of thing. I don't know if that's an actual matchup, but that's the kind of theoretical thing we could get. You don't need to be going bouncing back and forth for a three game series to three, two different travel runs. You only need one. So yeah. I think that it's fair that that's fair. Um, what's crazy is the way that we ended the season, which is um, it seems pretty clear that Arvid Soderblom is going to be the guy because they started three straight games and back to back to back nights with Arvid Soderblom playing every single one of them. Arvid he only gave up five goals. Arvid looks like he's back. Mm -hmm. And yeah. him going into the playoffs good. to play against another young, good goaltender and just for Wallstead, we could be in for a good goaltending series for a best of three. It could be one of those series to watch out for going into a playoff because mm -hmm. Arvid can win yourself a game single handedly, and um, Wallstead can win a a uh, series single handedly. That's how good this goalie matchup could be going into the playoffs. Yes, uh, Soderbloom had a rough start to the season, but he looked like he's back to playing good and net and found his game. 
He's he's had that for about a month now, maybe more, a month or so. Yeah, considering how bad the uh, everything, because he started the season with a lot of time in the NHL, but he got sent back down to Rockford in like December or January, and he's been there ever since. And considering how bad his January was in Rockford, the fact that he's still into the season with a save percentage of 905 is actually kind of impressive because yeah. he's really rebounded since, but he was he was pretty bad for a while there. And I think that overall, in terms of your evaluation of Soderblom, you kind of have to ignore the numbers a little bit because there's a lot, there was a lot of fractured development going on this year. I think that next year, I mean, we might have taken a season step back with Soderblom in terms of his trajectory, but I think there's still a plan for him to be moving in the right direction. He's still only 23. He doesn't turn 24 until the beginning of next season. These there's, it, there's still so much to look forward to with him. And it does look like next year, Soder Bloom will probably be the backup in Chicago to Peter. Morris. Or the one or the one B at least. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Possibly. Hopefully. So, um, on the other side of the net, it's going to be probably just for Wallstead. And Wallstead this year has played where he looks like he could be ready for the NHL next season. I wouldn't just because I think you always want to preach patience with goaltending, oh, especially yeah. a guy, especially a guy as young as Jesper Wallstead. I mean, like he was drafted in 2021. Um guy had I think he's not I don't even think he's 20 yet. Or he, he I, is he either, 20. He, he just yeah, he either just turned twenty or he is or or he's still a teenager. But yeah, he's so he's twenty now. He's still so young. He's playing this entire season in the American Hockey League, which is really a difficult place for. If you're tw- if you're that young, you should not be succeeding in the mm-hmm. AHL. And for him to be as not spectacular, but just be good, just be decent. For him to be decent in the AHL as a 20-year-old is wildly impressive. And there's a reason why he's the most highly coveted goaltending prospect in the entirety of the NHL. And it still boggles my mind how the heck he went 21st overall. In 38 Edmonton, games. Man. Ken Holland. It was yeah. 22nd, actually, I think. Or 20th. 20th Ken, 20th. Ken Holland really botched it. He could have had himself his goalie of the future. But granted, they have uh, Stuart Sin- Skinner, who could be a Calder finalist this year. And the Stuart NHL. Skinner's cool. But and of course, you know, Jack Campbell. And, and Jack Campbell could figure it out, maybe. Yeah, um, maybe. In 38 maybe. games, just. Jesper Wallstead posted a uh, 908 save percentage and a 2.6 2.68 goals against average. Yeah, which is, a, and which is really good. good, especially since he did set the record for the Isle Wild um, franchise win record for a goaltender this With year. With 18. Yeah, man, that's that's good. Um. So this was his first, his first season in the AHL. Mm-hmm. Yeah, first year in North America. That's good. Let's get into the season series recap, but just a quick one. The Hogs and Wild are very familiar with each other, playing each other 11 times this season. What's your guys' takes going into this series? Can I start with the fact that uh, why the heck is the AHL scheduling so bad? Well, it's not for travel that. purposes, I think. Yeah, okay, sure, it's for travel purposes, but, like, you're playing 11 times against a single opponent? Like, there's seven, There, we have seven teams, like, seven teams in the Central Division in the AHL. Are we playing 11 times against every single team? No, we're not, we're not playing 11 times against every single team, like, why can't why can't they just have more uniform scheduling? It's just a ridiculous situation. There's teams, I, there's teams in the AHL the Ice Hogs haven't even played this year, like once at all. Yeah. There's teams they have played in the Eastern Conference. There's teams they haven't played in the Eastern Conference. Meanwhile, the Iowa Wild they've played them eleven times. Seems a bit ridiculous. It uh, is. Tyler, would you like to know another silly thing about the AHL? Oh, I mean, there's plenty of silly things about the AHL. Okay, well, would you like to guess the one I'm about to bring up right now? Go for it. The 27th team, 27th team in the league, the 27th worst, 
made the playoffs. Who is that? The two the Tucson Roadrunners. The oh Rays, yeah. So, so, oh, they well, made the playoffs even, with sixty nine points. Well, we haven't even talked about the I, fact that we haven't even talked about the part where not every AHL team plays the same number of games. There's a division yeah. with seven teams, and there's also a division with actually, 10 actually, teams. that's false. Now that was that was that would be true in the years past, but everyone played seventy two games this season. Oh, okay. But there's still a division with 10 teams. Meanwhile, separately, a division with seven teams. Yeah, oh, and apparently the silly. Chicago Wolves can just decide that they're going to go independent. <laughs> <laughs> what, are they wanting to be the next Atlanta Thrashers? <laughs> no, the, do you, did you hear about this? Yeah, I know. I'm just yeah, saying. You know, but... Are they wanting to set up to be the next expansion team to the NHL and move to Atlanta? <laughs> because clearly well, Atlanta, for some odd reason, wants to be in the NHL again. Third time's the charm? Maybe. <laughs> okay, well, let's get back on topic. Yeah, let's um, get back on topic here. Ice but, Hogs season the, recap. The season series between the Ice Hogs and Wild is actually very interesting. Both teams love to play it to the final horn and get to overtime. It went to overtime, if I remember correctly, it's seven times in this series, if I'm correct here. That sounds about right. Yeah, because the Ice Hogs had the Ice Hogs won five times and the Wild won six times. However, the Ice Hogs only have one regulation uh, loss, and I think the Wild only have three regulation losses. Yeah, it so the, seven times a, the game went to overtime. This is a close matchup between the two teams. They hate each other. This is going to be a true rivalry matchup. The teams hate each other. I think there's been several fights this season between the two teams. And several games where it got very heated in moments in the game. I remember at the teddy bear toss this year because that was who the Ice Hogs played this season for the teddy bear toss. Three fights broke out, it felt like, at that game. And um, it seems like we're in for a heated series. Could end up being one of those series that go the full series length of three games if the ice hogs are to win the home opener of this series it's in their hands to knock out the wild in game two but it's going to be a tough series to win in two. Oh, i'm trying to find i'm trying um, to find our like home record against them because that certainly would be um good. i think that it would be i mean i think that it would be difficult for them to win it in two games um Obviously, that's the ideal goal. You want to get the series done and over and quick as much as as quickly as you can, especially because they have a home ice game seven in Iowa, and yeah, you don't. And again, game seven or not a game seven, but a game three. It feels like a game seven. Obviously. It will be like a game seven situation. Any anything can happen in that game three, and you want to make sure you get that over and done with as quickly as possible because the Ice Hogs really aren't even technically in the playoffs yet. They haven't reached the last 16. They have to win this series. They have to win this three-game series to make it to the last 16. Yeah, but... and if the, if the Ice Hogs were to win this series, they will be playing their opponent they played in the play-in series last year who would be the Texas Stars. Mm-hmm. But it this is an interesting matchup. This Two teams hate each other. It was a very close season series spread, and we're in for uh, potentially a good playoff round between the Ice Hogs and Wild. We get a um, get so I want I think that what we want to do next is let's talk about the um the Ice Hogs top six. Yeah, Ice Hogs oh, top amazing. six forwards. It's beautiful. So Ice Hogs top six forwards. Now that everyone's back down the AHL, you have. The guys who've been there the entire season. So the guys who've been there the entire season, you start with uh, Luke Philp, Brett Sini, and David Gust. Yep. And then you add in the other names to that group, which is the newcomer. There's Rocco two newcomers, Grimaldi. actually. Rocco Grimaldi, who's been tearing it up in the AHL, and Joey Anderson, who played a lot in the NHL for the Blackhawks, but was el- made eligible for the Ice Hogs playoffs, and he's going to be great. And then and- you have the superstar... Lucas Reichel, who's going to be absolutely fantastic for the Ice Hogs all season. And when he went up to the NHL, he played very well for the Blackhawks as well. So you combine those six players together, Sini, Philp, Gus, 
Gus was actually leading scorer of the team this year, plus Reichel, plus, yeah, so Sini, Philip, Gus, Reichel, then Joey Anderson, and Rocco Grimaldi, and that's your top six. I think that that's that that that's a top six. That when you're compare, then when you're looking across the American Hockey League, that top six could give any team a run for their money. It's everything else that needs to show up. And I think the biggest thing for the Ice Hogs this year has been a lack of consistency. Yeah, and the fact is, it didn't help the Ice Hogs when the Blackhawks traded off everyone at the deadline, and they needed to call up players from Rockford. The Ice Hogs going to, after the deadline. They were not good at all, but they managed to fight to make the playoffs. The Ice Hogs ended up getting Reichel and uh, Vlasic back for the final stretch of the season, which was good to see because if they didn't, I don't think the Ice Hogs would be in a position to be playing for the Calder Cup this year. I think it would have been the Chicago Wolves finding themselves into the playoffs. Now with the Ice Hogs roster all set and ready to go for a playoff run, they have a good top six, and their defense is actually very solid. Yeah. So I just did some quick checking here. Our away record against the Iowa Wild, so in Iowa is 3-3, and and our home record against them is 2-3. and Okay. All right, so, so we, again, it's 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 extremely even. Right. I think yeah. that I would be I would be surprised if the series ended in two for either team. I think it goes the distance. I I'm think not so as well. My prediction yet, um, but I think hmm. it goes the distance. Yeah. Now, I want to also look at the um, defense matchups. So the Ice Hogs top six defensemen. You're looking at that. You have guys like so they got Jakob Galvis, Isaac Phillips, Alex Vlasic, Alec Regula. And then probably, um, probably Philip Roos and then Louis Crevier as well. I Something guess that... about Louis Crevier that might be a little interesting. Yeah, I think he's hurt. Is, Is Louis he? Crevier hurt? He did not play the last game, but he was at the game because when we did our season or our season awards, he accepted his award for the I think it was most improved. He was there in a suit, but he did not play. We'll it might have, you know, I think that I think that might have just been um, a rest night. I think it's a I think it's a rest thing because you know even th- I think that even though they um, kind of were aggressive with so- with Soderblom in terms of the three games and three nights, it's very common. At least in the past, it was common for the AHL to play three games and three nights, and when that happened, they did not. It was very very often you did not have guys playing all three games. It was, it was very often. And that could be the reason, but I just so thought it was I, notable. I think Crevier will play. I think he'll be a factor. And I think that in the end, you're looking at Regula, Vlasic, Roos, Crevier, Phillips, and um, and Galvis. And that's, that's probably six. the best, the best six right there. It's a blue line for the Ice Hawks. They have a, go- a great blue line going for themselves. Mm. I noticed the other night, though, uh, Alex Vlasic wearing a letter on his jersey in his first full season of professional hockey. That's good to see Vlasic already getting uh, the reputation of potential leadership quality going in for the future of his career. We talked about that on the Shogo podcast today about having the letter C- on. CHGO. S- same thing. You know what I meant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Vlasic is obviously going is a leader among the Ice Hogs, and I think next year will be a full time NHLer as well. Yeah, I think so. And I, I think so. I think him along with Wyatt Kaiser both really impressed in NHL games uh, at the end of the season. Um, I did want to ask both of you, who do you Go think ahead. is more of the who do you think is the true X factor that's going to that's going to be the who is the reason if he steps up is the reason why the Ice Hogs will win the series, and if he doesn't step up, could be the reason why they aren't able to pull it out. Um, I would probably have to go with Lucas Reichel on this one, just because now with his NHL experience of, did he play 19 games down the stretch with the Blackhawks, if I remember correctly? Yeah. Uh, and he played great in all those games. I think Reichel, if he shows up to play, 
the Wild are in for a hard series because if he's not going to show up to play, the Ice Hogs are going to have a hard time scoring, and we know how hard it was for the Ice Hogs to score going down the stretch. And with Reichel back, I think he is the main X factor going into the series. Mm-hmm. John? David Gust. Okay. He's got, David. he's got four points in ten games. That's not appealing. He's better than that. Yeah, he is. He's better than that. He, he, maybe yes, we he is, but I'm just saying. Like, last year he's been a little bit invisible. The, playoff Gus last year for the Wolves, he was the MVP for the playoffs. He went nuts. I'm just and, I'm just pointing out there, though, that he's only got 10 points, or he only has four points in 10 games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Players have rough stretches down the line, but of, of I course, think Gus will have a bounce back in the play. I think t- so too, but it's just something yeah. worth noting that he's been a little bit invisible mm-hmm. these last uh, few games here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So for me, um, my pick is actually a bit different. So I look at the top six that the Ice Hogs have, and most of those guys are either just under or near a point of game level. The defense is extremely talented, but I'm looking farther down the lineup. If you look at the rest of the Ice Hogs this season, nobody outside of their top six who is currently on the roster has cracked 30 points this season. Cole Gutman hit 30 points, but he wasn't made eligible for the playoffs, and then he also got injured, which would have ruled him out for the playoffs as well. Dylan Secura did, but then he got traded. And then everyone else who's hit 30 points this season also hit 50 points this season, which was Reichel, Philip, Sini, and Gust. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you've got Grimaldi and Anderson who weren't playing for the Ice Hogs, but they're obviously very good AHL players. But my X factor is actually Michael Tepley. I think that in order for the Ice Hogs to have a good series, they need depth scoring to actually step up. Because so far this season, it has not. They have nobody outside of their top six who they can reliably trust to put up half a point a game this season. And that's not going to fly. They have to get depth scoring from their second power play unit and from their se- and from their third line. And if that's not going to come from Tepley, then I they're going to they're going to struggle if they can only run two lines where they can trust to score. Yeah, Tepley had a horrible season this year, mm-hmm. and going into this playoff, he really does need to step up his play. He had a great season last year, but going into the playoffs this year, he had a really hard to watch season for himself this year. So, and it's really very well the wild though. I will say very that. inconsistent. Very inconsistent. He only put up 25 points in 56 games this year. You got to do better than that if you're going I mean the what we expected of Tapley is so much better than that. Um so to go along with the whole like the last 10, he's got 6 points in his last 10. So he's kind of trending up, but he's also kind of staying in the middle. Like a, he's just kind of there, you know. That's a that's a better pace than what he was on beforehand. So possibly there could be something there. Yeah. Right, and then he put up a three point game against the Wolves, which is his highest point total in a single game this season. This, the Ice Hogs will need their bottom six to step up their play because if you don't have all four lines rolling. You have a rough time going in any playoff series, no it, no matter what league you're in. NHL, As, AHL, you need all four lines rolling, and the Ice Hogs will need that third and fourth line actually producing a little bit better in playoff hockey. As consistent as consistent and good our top sixes are, our bottom six is just as inconsistent and not very good. Yeah. Yeah. They're absolutely. like polar opposites. They're polar opposites. Yeah. Um, and let's get into season predict this uh prediction for the series. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh game, John, game by game. We got, we game got three by game. games. Let's go game by game. Okay. So I say we win the first game. Let's say let's say we win it convincingly four to one. Four one? Okay. Right. And then this might be a little bit of a hot take, but we'll win the second game in Iowa 
let's say three to two in overtime. Yeah. So you have the Ice Hogs eliminating the Wild in two. Right. Tyler? Two. All right, so I do think the Ice Hogs will take it in the first game. I just think that, you know, we've been able to send guys down. Meanwhile, the Wild, the Minnesota Wild, are play, Minnesota Wild are playing in the playoffs right now. Mm-hmm. They can't put guys here. They can't, like, they can't send guys down for this. They can't. Uh, they they can't put their energy into this, so they have to worry about that. So, we're a stronger team than we've been. We're better than our record. Our goalie's playing better than his stats show. Mm-hmm. And with them, I'd say that their goalie is great as well, but they're not as good as they could be if they were able to send guys down. So for me, I think that in the end, the Ice Hogs are going to win the first game of the series. And the final score is going to be something like, I'll say five to two. Okay. Probably, probably after an empty netter. So five okay. to two, and then the second game, I think that Iowa will take it. That game will probably come down to overtime. I think okay. that game. I think they'll win that game four to three in overtime, and then game three is where I think the Ice Hogs win it. And in that one, I'm going to say the final score is two nothing. Okay. Low so, scoring yeah. game, low scoring game, young talented goaltenders on each side. And the only one who's going to, sh- who's the only one who's going to be able to break the deadlock is the one and only Lucas Reichel. <laughs> okay. Wait, um, what's the score in the second game? Um, second game score is uh, 4 3. Okay. okay. In overtime. So we only, all right. So Soda Bloom only gives up, what, five goals in three games again? Because you had five two as the first game. So six goals. Oh, six goals. Yeah, because yep. because we lost the second game four. Okay, four three. So two goals first game four four goals second game and then shut putting up the shutout the last game. I'll Next. take that any day. All right, um, game one since it's in in Rockford, I ex I would say the Ice Hogs should pull out the win. And I think it's going to be an overtime game because we saw so many overtimes between these two teams this season already. And I'm going to predict the Ice Hogs winning game one in Rockford in overtime with a final score of two to one. I think we're Nick, going to why have you a, give me such a hard game in game one. And hell, it could... If I remember correctly, they do continuous overtime for yes. the um, play-in series. Correct. Uh, so it could be one of those type of marathon type of games. If it is, that could be a fun one to watch. Um, so game two, I think the Wild do come back and tie up the series to force a game three. And I would expect the Wild to win 3-2 two in regulation over the Ice Hogs in game two. And in game three, I know it sounds like I'm Homer, but I <laughs> everyone here is predicting the Ice Hogs too. But I'm predicting the Ice Hogs to close out the series with a final score of three to nothing Rockford. Closing out the series Two one series win for the Rockford Ice Hogs to play the Texas Stars in round one of the playoffs. Uh, Nick, I do not appreciate you giving me a heart attack at home. That is not that is not appreciated, but I will deal with it. Thank you. All right, and I think that should be it for our uh, season preview going into the Ice Hogs versus Wild. Anything you guys want to close out for statements? Tyler? Um, uh, Connor McDavid's going to win the Con Smythe on the losing team. Okay. John? Uh, fuck the Wild. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and <laughs> so, guys, down in the comments down below, I want to hear what your thoughts are going into this series. We will have reviews of each game of the Ice Hogs run to hopefully a Calder Cup championship. And 
Thank you for watching the broadcast. Please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And most of all, let's go Hogs. And John.